Hello, everyone, and welcome to this presentation. My name is Bardia Sharif, and I'm a PhD student in Eindhoven University of Technology, where I'm advised by professors Marcel Hirsches and Maurice Hamels. And this work is also a result of collaboration with Professor Henk Neimeyer from the same institution. As the title suggests, we are interested in the equivalence between two classes of dynamical systems, which are variants of the so-called class of projected dynamical systems, or PDS, uh, which are as described as in here. Uh, the main ingredients here are firstly a constraint set S and a vector field F, and the dynamics are then given primarily by uh, X dot is equal to F of X, as long as the resulting trajectories are contained within the set S. As soon as that's not the case anymore, the vector field is changed by selecting an element of the set of admissible velocities given by the tangent cone to the set, and then picking a, a, an element of it which is closest to the original vector field. So typically, the PDS will have uh, trajectories as depicted here. The dynamics start evolving according to the original, uh, so the primary mode of operation. But as soon as they tend to violate the constraint set, they pick an element of the tangent cone, which is closest to the original vector field. And then this allows for motion inside the set. Uh, many people have uh, studied these systems, and this has led to many fundamental system theoretical results. So also results, uh, numerical methods for the simulation of these systems. And these systems have found application in many fields of work, including control and optimization. Uh, as mentioned in this talk, we are interested in uh, establishing equivalence between two recent variants of PDS, which are namely extended PDS or EPDS and oblique uh, PDS or OPDS. And we do this to facilitate the transfer of system theoretical properties and tools from one class to the other. Extended PDS were basically introduced in our uh, CDC paper of 2019, where in addition, to, uh, with, in comparison to the uh, original PDS setting, we added this additional term to the optimization problem to enable our partial projection of the dynamics. So the vector field is again an element of the tangent cone to the set. However, we pick an element of the tangent cone, which is the result of correction of the original vector field in a particular direction given by the image of this matrix E. In general, in addition to the partial projection of dynamics, these systems are well defined for a wider variety of constraint sets and also include PDS as a special case. In particular, if E spans the whole state space, we cover the original PDS setting. One thing that is worth mentioning is that uh, the introduction of these systems was heavily inspired by a particular control element called the hybrid integrator gain systems or HICS that we study. And the main, the main uh, underlying thought here was that uh, when considering the feedback interconnection of a controller and a system to be controlled, we can in fact only uh, project the controller states and not the other states. So uh, to clear this up, and let me shortly talk about the Higgs. Uh, these are systems that are basically switch linear systems uh, uh, and uh, they act as a linear integrator as long as their input and output belong to a set S1. As soon as they get out of S1 and go into another set called S2, we switch to a so-called gain mode. And uh, these sets are constructed in such a way that the resulting uh, input and output pair always are contained within a constraint set uh, sector denoted here by F. And as you can see, then we have normally the integrator dynamics as long as we can. As soon as the, these the dynamics tend to violate the constraint set, we switch to a gain mode such that the trajectories remain on the boundary of the set. As a result of this construction, the input and output always have the same sign. And this leads to a phase advantage, at least from a describing function point of view, which is in fact uh, uh, over a linear integrator. Uh, and uh, in fact, this is the same as what you get with the famous Clegg integrator. The difference, however, is that uh, we perform projections on the uh, state of the integrator instead of resets and jobs. So we get to a continuous control signal. What we have done is to formalize these uh, systems in the framework of uh, EPDS and establish a few uh, system theoretical properties for them. Now, uh, and the other class of systems that are of interest to us are the oblique PDS or OPDS, which to the best of my knowledge are introduced in this science paper. 
And uh, their main feature is that they enable uh, projection with respect to a non-Euclidean norm as defined here. Uh, these systems also include PDS as a special case. And they have been mainly used in feedback-based optimization. The main thing is that uh, they have been more extensively studied compared to EPDS. And this is in fact the main motivation behind this study because uh, we want to know under which conditions these systems are equivalent. Uh, and once we have that, we can benefit from the existing results for uh, OPDS to study EPDS in general and Higgs in particular. So uh, in what uh, remains, I'm gonna first uh, describe the setting and then uh, present the equivalence results, some first implications of the equivalence, and then summarize and conclude the presentation. So in this work, we consider mainly uh, constraint sets that are convex polyhedral cones, as uh, described here. We also consider OPDS with a constant matrix G. Uh, and uh, this need not be the case. However, we do this because, as shown already in the literature, this type of OPDS can be written as a classic OPDS through an appropriate similarity transformation. And then in turn, if we have the equivalence between EPDS and such OPDS, we can also rely on existing uh, PDS results for analysis of X and EPDS in general. Okay, this already brings me to a first uh, equivalence condition, uh, results, sorry. So we can show that every OPDS uh, of this form with a constant matrix G can be written as an EPDS. And this simply follows from what I just described. Uh, essentially, every OPDS of this form can be written as a PDS through an appropriate similarity transformation. And then it follows from the fact that every PDS is also an EPDS with this choice of matrix E that we can write this OPDS as an EPDS. Now, the more interesting question is the reverse one. So how do we go from the EPDS setting to the OPDS? In the paper, we show a sufficient condition for this. Uh, basically, we show that given a constraint set S, a matrix E and a positive definite matrix G, these uh, projection operators are equal if this condition two here holds. And the proof follows from uh, treating each of these uh, projection operators uh, as a uh, constrained quadratic programming problem and writing the KKT optimality conditions for them. And then comparing this uh, condition leads to uh, equation two here. This is an algebraic condition. We also present an alternative geometric condition, which is easier to check. So given matrices E uh, and a constraint set, we show that there exists a positive definite matrix G satisfying the previous theorem, if and only if this uh, equation three here holds. Uh, and what this does for us is that given uh, the data of an EPDS, we can check if we can actually use the previous uh, theorem to write it as an OPDS, as an equivalent OPDS. Uh, this is an easy to check geometric condition. However, there is a catch. And, uh, and that's the fact that we don't really use any information or knowledge about the vector field. So this actually, if this condition holds, we can write the system as an OPDS regardless of what the vector field is. This can be quite conservative. So if we have uh, knowledge of the vector field, what we can do is to define this set here which essentially gives us the indices of the facets of the constraint set at which projection of the vector field of the original vector field does not uh, result uh, in the original ve vector field again. Because if that is the case, we do not need any conditions there because irrespective of the choice of E and G, we have the same vector field. So to make that clear, if you have a constraint set of this form and when this uh, first constraint is active, we know that the vector field is contained within the tangent column. We don't need any conditions here. However, if you have a situation like this where the vector field can potentially not be in the uh, tangent column, then we need to have conditions because then E and G do affect uh, the vector field and thus the dynamics of the system. With this uh, train of thought in mind, uh, what uh, we can do is to uh, refine the results that I presented earlier to get to uh, these conditions. So the result from theorem one uh, reduces to a question four here. So we, we only check the conditions on the facets that matter in the problem. And also we have a, a necessary and sufficient for condition four uh, in terms of equation five. 
Uh, so, given this, uh, let me now uh, talk a little bit about the implications of the equivalence. So, one important property, for example, for EPDS that uh, we want to study is incremental stability. And now we can show that uh, if we have a vector field of this form and an, e and an EPDS, we know that the EPDS is incrementally globally asymptotically stable if there exists a matrix G such that this condition is satisfied and the function P is continuous and there exists a positive alpha such that this strong monotonicity property is also satisfied. Uh, and, and basically this follows from the fact that, okay, from this first condition, we know that we can write the APDS as an OPDS. This is a result of our first theorem. And then from this, we can use the fact that this established that for OPDS, this monotonicity property leads to conclusions in terms of incremental global uh, asymptotic stability. Similar conclusions can be, uh, uh, similar arguments can lead to uh, sufficient conditions for incremental input to state stability, convergence and periodicity of steady state solutions. In the paper, we also show that we can use our knowledge of the vector field together with the refined result uh, from the previous slides to get to an OPDS-based representation of Higgs controlled systems. To summarize, we have uh, established uh, sufficient conditions for the equivalence of PDS and OPDS. We've also discussed first implications of the equivalence and then also use the equivalence results to obtain a new representation for Higgs control systems. In the future, we wish to exploit the results in an in-depth study of EPDS in general and Higgs control systems in particular, and to also obtain equivalence results for more general constraints. Uh, thank you for your attention.